Man City have just won the Premier League for the third year in a row. We decided that something had to change and now the best team in England will be decided by football imperialism. We've put every Premier League team on a map of England and we're going to spin this wheel to choose a team and then spin this arrow to choose a direction they attack. So let's say the wheel lands on Man City. If the arrow points west, they've got to attack Man United. And if they win, they take their territory. And not only that, they get to steal the other team's best player. We'll be repeating this process until one team rules the Premier League. And the first team attacking will be Man City. Taking on Liverpool. A chance falls to Holland early in the game. Nope. Thiago tries a shot from outside the box. Oh, to no avail. Into the second half. Gundogan to Haaland. Makes it 1-0. And that's enough to win the game. Grealish goes and gives Salah a hand. He's going to Man City, baby. Fancy seeing you here. And just like that, Liverpool are gone. Time for the next spin. We've got Wolves and they're heading southeast to Aston Villa. So the first bit of action is in the 50th minute as Ollie Watkins puts Ashley not so young in on goal and he finishes with his weaker foot. Absolute limbs from the Villa fans as they take the Wolves territory and take over the West. Game three sees City back on the road again as they go up against Leeds. An easy game, surely, especially with Salah joining the team. Patrick Bamford finds himself in acres of space. Now in the 27th minute, Jack Harrison plays a lofted through ball to Bamford, who doubles. He doubles the lead. I can't believe it. What is City doing? City know that they need to do something, and they finally turn it on. They gain plenty of chances. Grealish manages to pull one back in the 89th minute. Too little, too late for City, as Leeds hold on to the one-goal lead and claim City's territory, as well as Erling Haaland who joins his father's old club. City are out and it lands on Aston Villa. They head southwest and take on Bournemouth. Wendy opens the scoring with an absolute rocket. Speaking of rockets, he sees Alicia Lehman in the crowd as well. The only goal of the match means Aston Villa take Philip Billin and their land. Hopefully we'll see more goals in the next game as Leeds take on Forest. Harlan makes his way onto the pitch, representing Leeds for the first time. The city he was born. Can it help them take over the land? Harlan takes a shot from outside the box. What a save by Navas. And pop him into a nanny SBC. Harlan gets the ball in the box, unselfishly squares the ball to Willy Nonto, who places it home. Ah, normally when a, a Willy and a ball are in a box, Rob, I, uh, I'm having a different sort of time. Leeds win the game and clearly Kaylor Navas is questioning how he's gone from Madrid and Paris to end up playing for Leeds. Leeds take over the land, looking like early favourites to win the whole thing. Back to the wheel as it lands on Brentford. And they're heading south to take on Southampton. It's early in the game, only the 13th minute. Shea Adam plays in a dozy, who puts it away nicely. Southampton eke out the 1-0 win and take over Brentford's territory, as well as Ivan Tony. Still 14 teams left, this time Aston Villa. Good evening. And they're heading north to take on Manchester United. Into the second half as Ollie Watkins gets past the United back line and finishes into the bottom right corner. Villa are victorious. We move on to the next game as Rashford becomes a villain. Next up on the wheel, we've got Arsenal heading northwest to play Leicester. Leicester, creating a lot of chances, unable to beat Arsenal's Aaron Ramsdale, and the game goes to penalties. Now I'm panicking. Oh, God, misses. So does Party. You can tell it's not real life because Danny Ward has been the hero for Leicester as his side take over Arsenal's territory. Not only that, they take the Norwegian prince, Martin Odegaard. Who will be the next game? It's Villa, and they're heading north to take on the mighty Leeds United. Two of the surprise packages, Rob, who've picked out plenty of territory and some world-class players along the way. One is going out. Let's find out who. First chance comes to Villa as Watkins leaps like a no. salmon, but saved by Kaelin Navas. Jack Harrison tries a shot near post, but Martinez is wise to it. No way through for either side. It's going to penalties. It's Weston McKenney to win it for Leeds. And he does. Leeds win, and they take Rashford and a big chunk of land. And it looks like Crystal Palace are making their first appearance as they go south to take on Brighton. Guita, doing what I seem to do on Ultimate Team on a daily basis, gives the ball to Welbeck, who nets his second and wins Brighton in the game. Zaha, clearly not a fan of the seaside, as he joins the Seagulls in their quest for glory. Who will the wheel land on this time? We've got Spurs, and they're going south to take on Fulham at Craven Cottage. The dynamic duo link up. We've got Kane making it 1-0. Son, plays in Danjuma. Bang, that makes it two. It must feel 10 feet tall scoring that one. My God. He looks it too. Look at the size of him. Spurs get that W, and with it, they get their land and Polina. We get into the business end of the season as Chelsea head south towards Brighton. Can Zaha help his new side to victory? Zaha on the ball. Hack down. Can he score the free kick? Uh, no, he can't. Oh. Nice first minute. Sterling is through and he scores. 
Now we know why Graham Potter got sacked. He's getting frisky with his players. Brighton's territory becomes Chelsea's and Matoma makes his way to the bridge. Will has chosen West Ham and the team they're attacking are Chelsea. An absolute snore fest of a game means we're going to penalties. Zuma steps up and he scores. West Ham win and with it, they get their land and N'Golo Kante. This time on the wheel, we've got Southampton going west towards Leeds. Harrison plays to Haaland, plays to Nonto, back to Haaland. It's 1 0 to Leeds. El Yunusi manages to beat the offside trap and levels the game. Once again, boys, it is penalties. Navas needs a strong arm for this one. Armstrong wins it for Southampton as they take a huge chunk of land and the crown jewel, Erling Haaland. Southampton again, this time they're on the road towards Leicester. Southampton looking to expand their land with the addition of the Norwegian beast, Haaland. Things are starting out feisty with plenty of reckless challenges flying in. Tony opens the scoring in the 73rd minute. You'd bet on him to score that. I know he would. And Haaland, just to add insult to injury, he scores in injury time. Southampton expand their already massive territory and bring in Haaland's Norwegian mate, Martin Odegaard. Five teams remain. Who will we get? It's West Ham and they're taking on Southampton. Southampton involved in yet another game as Haaland, he gives it over to Tony. Tony shoots, what a finish, that is in the top bins. The Norwegian connection is showing as Odegaard gives it to Haaland, what a finish. Arubo's on the ball again, he's making all these things happen. Over to Walker Peters, it's to Haaland, he passes it across to Tony and he finishes it. It's been an easy game for the Saints as they win 3-0 and go marching on. Southampton looks to be huge favourites going to the last few games as they pick up Kante from West Ham. What a player. The wheel lands on Newcastle as we're down to our final four. There's nowhere to go as they take on Southampton. Callum Wilson breaks down the left. It's a fantastic finish across the keeper. 1-0 was enough to win the game for them and they steal Haaland. Not only that, they are dominating the map. They are looking like likely winners. Three teams remaining. Who will it be? It's Everton and they take on Newcastle. It's an early chance for Joel Winston. It's an easy save though by Pope. Calvert-Lewin win the game. Nope. He misses the target. Robbie, I can't believe it. We're going to pens once again. Who's going to come out victorious? If Coleman can score this, Everton win. And he finishes it past Nick Pope. And Everton win and are in the final, having played just one game. It's like entering last in a Royal Rumble. If you saw Sean Dyche, then he was uh, lifting up Seamus Coleman like he belonged in the WWE. Haaland has been absolutely all over the shop and he ends up at Goodison Park. Robbie. This is it, it all comes down to this. We're in the final. Who will be crowned the winner of FIFA Imperialism? Hoybier picks up the ball, plays it to Kane. Fancy little flick. What a finish! We've got to see a replay of that. Fancy little flick, left footed volley. Wow! Let's go all the season, Rob. As here comes Spurs again, looking for a second. Son with a nice flare pass. Kulsevsky puts it past Pickford, and the 2 0 up. Everton have got work to do. Seamus Coleman plays it to Haaland. Places to Corey, back to Coleman, back to Haaland, it's liquid. But he's offside in the build-up. I thought things were going to get interesting then, Rob. It's Tottenham going 2-0 up at half-time. We're into the second half and Everton needs to get a goal soon, but it doesn't look that way as Spurs are on the attack. Son gets the ball in the box. Wicked strike past the keeper. Oh no, he's offside. The linesmen are on it today, Rob. Dwight McNeil trying to spark some life into this Everton team. Breaks Emerson's ankles. No more TikTok dancing for him. The Spurs fans understandably ecstatic on the verge of victory as Tottenham have a throw in and Son throws it to Davies. And that is it, the referee has blown the whistle. For once, Spurs haven't bottled it. They are the winners of Premier League imperialism. And if you enjoyed this video, why not check out this one where we crown the best attacker in the world with a 1v1 tournament.